my pleasure to uh, uh, welcome Fabrizio Tortora from Falk Renewables. Falk Renewables is a developer, also operator, investor in wind farms, not only wind farms in Italy, but also outside Italy. And that is why we're very pleased to have you with us, Fabrizio, because you're going to speak about your general experience with permitting processes, what you see as the main problems, as the main barriers and how you deal with them. But your perspective is not only an Italian one, but also outside Italy. Fabrizio, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the time and the opportunity to speak uh, in, this, uh, in this event. Uh, yes, you're right. We are uh, active uh, in several countries, uh, not only in, in, in wind, but also in, uh, in the PV sector. Uh, just a few words. To introduce the company and just to give the brief, the international brief that we have uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in FARC. Um, the FARC Renewables is a, is a company that was born uh, in the early 19th, uh, so it, it is uh, one, 100 uh, more years that is uh, still active. Uh, it was in the steel sector before and now it's moved. Uh, to the, to the energy sector, and we are concentrated 100% uh, on developing uh, and active in the renewable sector. We are not only an IPP, uh, meaning producer, power producer, but we are also in the field of the services to be provided in the uh, renewable sector, and also in the uh, sale of energy to, to other uh, customers and supporting other customers and en enabling other customers to uh, become greener and greener. Uh, the company is 60% uh, owned by the family, Falk family, and 40% uh, is uh, floating on the, on the stock market. And uh, it has uh, grown during these uh, last years, uh, let's say last uh, four, four years, uh, uh, also in the light of the restart of the developing activities uh, uh, all over the world. So we are now very active in the development, uh, again on wind and PV, and we and the, the market uh, appreciated our move to, to start again the development because there are a lot of opportunities over there. Challenges, but opportunities as well. Uh, just to what is the differentiating factor from, uh, from our perspective, uh, from other, let's say, IPPs or developers, uh, is that we consider that sustainability is at the core. And uh, this uh, these, uh, sustainability charter is one of our main drivers in uh, all the activities that we perform in the renewable sector, meaning either in development uh, and during the operation of the asset. So we need to be close to the, to the, to the uh, communities where we act uh, and we need to be a sort of uh, enablers uh, of the local uh, uh, efforts and uh, values that uh, can be brought uh, from our presence uh, in, in, the, in the area. And there are uh, also tangible uh, uh, targets that we set, set up on ourselves uh, to achieve uh, these uh, a core uh, goal of the sustainability. Uh, the strategy is, uh, let's say, based on four pillars. One is the reduction, the reduction, uh, reduction of consumptions uh, through, let's say, also supporting our final and customers, uh, industrial ones, mainly in the reduction of the consumption, being more efficient and effective in the use of the energy. Uh, try to manage the flexibility of the energy, uh, which is uh, uh, linked to the, the, the use of this dispatching of the plants uh, and uh, using new technologies like uh, storage uh, uh, system in order to uh, increase the flexibility of the use of the energy. Uh, increase the capacity uh, by uh, the renewable capacity by increasing the, our projects uh, uh, pipeline and this uh, is a part of the, uh, the core of the discussion that we have uh, today 
and they from and decarbonize the consumption uh, uh, from the end customers. Uh, this is a quite a snapshot of uh, what FARC FARC renewables do uh, does in in the world. Uh, we have quite uh, quite uh, wide presence. Uh, either um, from uh, let's say presence in terms of assets uh, and also in terms of services provided uh, by by the by the companies that are belonging to the park uh, renewable solution we have uh, nearly 1.3 gigawatt of uh, uh, installed capacity which is a mix of wind and solar mainly there are two small plants in italy for biomass uh, and uh, waste to energy uh, we have some uh, uh, asset under construction, uh, uh, currently under construction. We hope to have them uh, on board and operating soon, very soon. And uh, let's say, we, since we restarted the development uh, activities, uh, uh, three point, we have built it up a 3.5 gigawatt uh, of development pipeline. As I was saying, that the, the four main pillars that mm, a business unit that support us uh, in the in the in the development in the growth are let's say the development the asset development which is the first uh, uh, pillars that you see in the right part of the slide then the services we enable our clients to better use and manage their their assets then we have the uh, the, the the asset management advisory services and then there is another one, which is, I would say, quite innovative, uh, is the di digitalization of the asset management, which aims to improve steeply the, the, the quality of the asset, uh, uh, the management of the renewable assets. Uh, on this regard, uh, I would say that uh, uh, this, this pipe, the pipeline uh, is quite spread all over the, the, all over the world, I would say including the US. Uh, in Europe, we have a quite a wide presence. Uh, historical one and new one uh, where we have uh, open market uh, recently, uh, such as Netherlands and Finland. Uh, but we have, we hope to have uh, very soon uh, asset uh, in operation. Uh, this is a more detailed uh, uh, snapshot of the of the of our presence uh, uh, in terms of uh, um, asset development uh, i think that uh, the flags uh, disappeared on the slide i don't know if you are able to see them but uh, you can see all these uh, are the countries where we are this is the last one in Finland. is the only one only flag that is over there but i think that is uh, it's important to see where how we act uh, in the different countries uh, in relation to the different market, the different presence from our perspective uh, and how we see the market in the short and the long term. The, 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 the important thing is that, uh, that I want to highlight now is that, uh, let's say, making the business development uh, and asset development uh, needs to have uh, a vertical integrated company that includes not only the development itself, so meaning that getting the permits and the, and the connection rights and the land rights and the, for, for building up the asset, but also understanding how these assets will be managed after the COD, so the commercial operation. Uh, so this is an, an important uh, thing that we consider in our, uh, in our uh, during the, 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 the the development activities. Uh, on top of this, of course, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, sustainability is uh, at the core. So not only in terms of uh, the, the quality of the asset uh, itself, in terms of technical quality of the asset, but also in terms of the uh, presence and quality in terms of the presence uh, in the land, in the areas where we act. Uh, now it appears the, the, the flex. Uh, so just to um, to give some uh, food for thoughts uh, is uh, let's say the, the, the any country uh, coming to the topic of today, any country is a different uh, country from uh, from the other. The main challenges are almost over there, but uh, let's say 
the, the, the the difference, uh, the differences between the countries uh, are making different uh, the challenges that we face uh, in uh, in each of them. So in some cases that might be some restriction on grids. So for example, Scotland, it's quite a challenge, uh, and uh, the grid charges are making viable or not viable a project, uh, which has probably thirty-five or forty percent of load factor. Or in some other cases, like in Italy, for example, landscape uh, is an issue in, some, in certain areas. Or in France, for example, uh, landscape is a, is a great issue. Uh, in terms of resource, uh, the, 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 the selection of the, the, the areas where we act uh, is made, made uh, mainly on the availability of the resource. Because, uh, let's say, making uh, PV plants in Finland uh, it's quite challenging nowadays. I don't know what, what, up, what will happen in the future, but so far it's quite challenging to make any uh, PV plant in the, in the Finland, while uh, wind can be developed for sure in Scotland, where there is a, a lot of resource, uh, and also in other countries where specifically in certain areas, like in Italy, in the certain central south, uh, and uh, in Spain, for example, in the northwest, uh, there is more wind. Uh, the, 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 the other point that I would like to, to mention now is that uh, the wind resource uh, has a value. And uh, given this is a value and this is a scarce resource, uh, we need to value it uh, in, the best, in the best way as we can, meaning implementing the best technologies that we might be facing now, but also foreseeing in the future. Uh, so this, is, this needs professional doing this. It's not just, uh, I started working in the renewable sector in 2000 or some months before. Uh, and uh, I saw a lot of projects that uh, were just dots on a map. Uh, thinking that putting some dots on a map uh, was enough to develop a good site. In this case, it's not, now is not this is the case. And we need to develop more in a more professional way, considering the resource, considering the area where we act, uh, and the acceptability of the project to look at. And, I, and, and this comes to the third point, uh, that is the local engagement. Uh, before, at the very beginning of the renewables, uh, uh, let's say, the idea is that we come to the local areas, we bring some uh, turbines, we install some turbines, or PV project as well. And this was enough because we were giving some additional uh, money locally for the local um, municipalities or country and uh, some work for the people, the local com companies. Now is more, it's more, it's quite different. And we need to be very local in doing this work. And we need to engage early with the, comp with the local communities uh, otherwise, it is impossible. In France, this is something that is a uh, key. And before you start uh, in some, uh, engaging with, for example, landowners, you have to consult with the major and see if this is acceptable to him and to the council and to the municipality. Uh, if you do the reverse, you will be considered as somebody who is trying to uh, get some lands, but probably you will not uh, go anywhere because uh, the local opposition will uh, start uh, immediately. In Netherlands, in Netherlands, uh, it's even more uh, not challenging. It's even more developed the, 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 the topic because, for example, you have to deal with local energy cooperatives that are built by local people. And normally, when you have to develop a site, a wind site or PV site, whatever it is. Uh, you have to engage with them and uh, uh, make a 50% uh, stake to the uh, give the 50% of the of the project the local cooperative because it, this is a value that you leave to the local people and share with the local people. So this is the the the, the, the framework where we act in in uh, in Scotland. Uh, here is something that is uh, coming from from a long time and it's quite developed. There are a lot of works that we and other players in Scotland have done. 
And uh, this is something that needs to be uh, also implemented in, uh, in the south of Europe, where this kind of uh, local engagement and share, share of the value is less developed. But we can take example from there and implement also in the, in the, uh, in the south of, of, uh, of Europe. Uh, the, the fourth point is, uh, let's say, is important because, uh, let's say, it is, it is a value having the local communities on board not for, for sharing the value, for having them on board and understanding that they are part uh, of a bigger picture of the decarbonizing the energy production in, in, the, in, in Europe. And this is the only way that probably, not always it's applicable, but probably the NIMBY, uh, the NIMBY um, issues might be uh, overcome and be solved uh, uh, by engaging with, uh, with the local communities. Uh, I would like to make some uh, very quick uh, example of what we do and uh, what, how we share the value of the, of the project and the presence of, uh, with, with local people. So community benefit scheme, uh, cooperative schemes are implemented and in some cases uh, co-ownership uh, of, of the plants that might be either let's say physical meaning that the, the local communities co-invest with us in the equity of the projects or in some other cases uh, by uh, a virtual shared ownership of the of the of the, of the plant we are implementing uh, in several countries uh, uh, lending crowdfunding uh, activities to allow people to gather some value, also economic value, not only physical value, but uh, of, of the projects that are implemented in the areas, giving, uh, let's say, an advantage uh, in terms of uh, uh, interest to the people who is uh, close by the plant. And of course, the other point uh, which is important and is, uh, let's say, key is uh, are two mainly one is uh, the supply chain we in some cases we sign it in some with some big players meaning uh, big oem uh, combined producers some clothes that uh, oblige them to use local content in terms of uh, supply chain for, for local labor or support in the in the, in the activities and secondly, we normally try to implement uh, uh, sort of training uh, activities locally to allow people to, uh, to understand how to enter in the, in the job world, uh, in the renewable job world, because by uh, having them uh, skilled and, and specialized, uh, they will be able to be used also in the plant uh, close by their houses. Uh, this is the, the uh, community lending crowd funding uh, where we uh, would like to implement very soon in Italy. So we are implementing now in, in, in Italy and where we aim to allow the people to be part of the, of the of the plant, so not only being seeing the, the plant uh, from far away, but also being over there and looking at them uh, and uh, thinking that this is creating value also for them. Huh? And uh, from that point of view, I would say I would end up my 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 presentation for the time being. Yeah, thank you very much, Fabrizio. That was an excellent presentation. Uh, uh, thanks a lot in particular for um, um, introducing the importance of local engagement. And I think uh, let's come back a bit later to that, how there is maybe a, a, um, a relation between problems in the permitting processes and the social acceptance. I think that's the big, one of the big questions that we really have to deal with. Um, and uh, certainly what we're planning to do is to do a separate webinar on this in the future because we also see that there, there, there is a strong impact from that. But let me ask you one question because you've mentioned, of course, many, like uh, Gadi already introduced them, many criteria, many aspects uh, uh, which 
can just be measured. Like when we talk about noise, you can make a measurement or you, you make a calculation uh, how that is impacting. Of course, people may still uh, not agree because some feel bothered by less noise than others. But then you talked about the landscape um, and that is something that is not really, you cannot really measure. You talked about in particular Italy and France. How are you dealing with such a criteria when you start playing a project that, that's not really predictable or, or how is your approach to this? Yeah, the, the subjective uh, matters are uh, remain over there. So the, the, there is somebody who likes uh, 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 green pool and uh, I like the red one. So yeah. it's, it's different from, from the perception is different. What we try to do is that, of course, uh, it's difficult to have 100% of people fully engaged and fully happy about a wind project or even a PV project, which is less impacting the landscape. Uh, on these, we normally hear locally where the people, uh, what is the use of the land and the area? For example, if people use uh, that area for hiking or biking, in some cases, uh, they are scared that they will uh, be not being able to use that area again. And uh, because there is the, the plant, uh, while if you make some trail, for example, for bikes, and so probably this will be uh, reduced. Or in some cases, uh, is a visual impact that is, uh, let's say, might be reduced by cutting one turbine, we do not have any, uh, we are not concerned about uh, taking out a turbine or part of a PV plant. Uh, if this is coming from, uh, let's say, the majority of the people locally, and where it comes from uh, a reasonable and mind, uh, mindful uh, uh, thought uh, on, on the project itself. While if you come to somebody and say, we do not like turbines, uh, on this regard, uh, uh, it's quite difficult to start a conversation because they will say, I do. for me, the, so the only solution is the zero one, no turbines. In that, reg in that regards, you can do very little over there. You can do something there if you start engaging with people and try to get uh, the same, gain some momentum around the project. I always say what we need as the wind sector is we need local lobbyists and I think the your approach of, of finding partners in those in the communities certainly can overcome some of these problems. But what I understand from what you say is that you look at every cage, uh, case as a specific case and you look at the, the specifics. So you do not have uh, one approach, let's say, for Italy or for France or for the UK, but really every project requires its specific approach yeah we the, the development activities we do with our directly uh with our companies so we face the the, the the issues because we we are not acting through developers or local developers somebody sometimes we they help us in finding the originating the opportunity but the, what we normally do is we act locally so our project manager and bd managers are interacting with the local communities directly and we need to feel directly what uh, is their thought on the project. Yeah, this is the key element. Of course, uh, if, uh, as Davide was mentioning, is the superintendent uh, is, uh, is against it. Uh, the only way to manage this is through is by law, because uh, you will have to trial them and sue them. And, and uh, in most of the cases, they are losing. And this, uh, this is a fact. But it's easier for them to say no rather to say yes and then be forced to say yes by uh, losing the trial in, in tribunal. This is the, the only effect. In some cases, we found uh, it's also important to talk with them, even if they are uh, prejudicial against the uh, wind, just to understand which might be a way or try to find a way to solve uh, the, the issues. Yeah, thank you very much. And I think this is certainly not the end of the discussion, but uh, we, no. we will continue this uh, here later also, have the discussion here. But uh, 
also in future events. And let me just also welcome Alessandro Costa. I've just seen your colleague here from Falk Renewables because Alessandro and I, we know each other from the Community Energy Working Group at IRENA, uh, which I think uh, uh, leads us also in, into the what you've just highlighted as, as uh, a, an important approach. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the time being.